Every year, thousands of dogs are reared in illegal puppy farms, many of whom don't live to see their first birthday. Now, the Dogs Trust is calling for the government to enforce new laws passed in 2007 for England and Wales to end the trade, as Keith Doyle reports. This is Poppy, a Yorkshire terrier whom her owners believe they unwittingly bought from a puppy farm where dogs are bred illegally in terrible conditions. The result is big profits for breeders, but often sick and diseased dogs. At the time we were a little bit suspicious, but the breeder had an answer for every question. Um, so we were reasonably happy. Although she didn't have any paperwork, we were still happy to take the dog. Um, hindsight's great. If we'd have known then what we know now, we would never have had the dog from them. Puppy farms are places where, where people, they overbreed dogs basically purely for profit. Um, without actually regarding or caring for the animal's welfare or health. You've got cruelty to the puppies themselves who are overcrowded. They're taken from their mothers early, uh, which in turn gives them behavioural problems. Overcrowding and, and no medical care gives them all sorts of infections from parvovirus to fleas to parasites and internal such as worms. But you've also got the other level, which is the breed bitches, who are over, uh, overbred on every heat. They're kept in, usually in cages, um, and uh, they in turn suffer health problems like womb infections, you get breast cancer obviously for dogs, and also stud dogs that are overused also have the health problems. So all in all, many, many levels of animal cruelty under one roof. Many of the puppy farms are in isolated rural areas. The animals are often sold by third parties through newspaper adverts or shops. At this rescue centre, they rehome around a thousand dogs a year. They suspect many of them have come from puppy farms where they've been bred without any care for their welfare or who they're sold to. Here they're looked after properly, but animals from puppy farms are taken from their mothers far too soon. The cuter they are, the easier they are to sell, often for over £500 each. Despite sellers' claims, their pedigree is often dubious and paperwork fake. This is Savannah. She's a three-month-old boxer, very boisterous girl. Uh, we suspect she's come from a puppy farm because she came across from Ireland, she has no papers to her name and she's just a typical cute breed that they'll breed at these farms. The government says all commercial breeders have to be registered but the charity Dogs Trust says the legislation which came into force in 2007 is not being acted on and the government needs to do more to end what it calls this barbaric trade. Puppy farming has to end. We have the Animal Welfare Act. We need secondary regulations under pet vending to stop puppies being sold, both through the superstores, through garages, through pet shops. This is a barbaric trade and it has to stop. The advice is to try and give a home to a rescue dog, but if you're buying one, only buy from registered breeders. Check with the Kennel Club. Go to the breeder and make sure you see the puppy with its mother. Pay attention to the welfare conditions and paperwork. And don't buy it because you feel sorry for it. You'll only make space for another and help continue this trade. Keith Doyle, BBC News. Well, we're going to be speaking to a dog psychologist just after 7 o'clock this morning about puppy farms and the effects they can have on the dogs which are bred there. For the past 30 years, we've been told that a dog's for life, not just for Christmas. But what if a dog you've bought doesn't even live to see its first Christmas? Well, that's the plight of thousands of dogs bought every year that have come from illegal puppy farms. Many are raised in squalid conditions, are often mistreated and have behavioural problems. We're joined now by animal psychologist Dr Roger Mugford with his dog PC, who's down there somewhere, isn't he? He's on the floor, very in quiet. Festive, in a festive mood. And vet Mark Abraham also joins us. Morning. Um, hello there. Mark, morning. first of all, uh, what, what's the sort of worst experience, what's the worst you've heard at that end of this, this business? I've actually been undercover to puppy farms and seen the horrendous conditions they're kept in and actually treated puppies that have died of parvovirus, which is entirely preventable, incredibly sad, a huge waste of money for the owner. And uh, we've really got to do something about it very quickly. People mm. will, straight away will be thinking, if, if these people are breeding the dogs and hoping to make money from selling them, it, it's not even in their interest, is it, to keep them in such bad conditions if they end up with diseases, malnourished, well, I mean, how, how does that work? The thing is, it's all about money, it's all about profit. If you can keep a dog going, literally, just to, to live and to breed on the most, you know, no money whatsoever, you know, rubbish dog food, they get sort of old sandwiches from supermarkets, just anything to keep them going to breed, it's well worth it, it's, it's, it's fantastic money for them, it's a quick buck, and uh, they make a fortune out of other people, and, uh, and uh, obviously exploiting dogs. Well, sure, there must be, um, I mean, for these places to survive, there must be enough good ones. Aren't there? Places where puppies are being looked after? 
There's, there's everything from the Kennel Club approved accredited breeders who are very professional and, and highly regulated from one extreme and all sorts of grey areas in between to these extremely bad ones. But it's up to the consumer to, to use their best judgment. You're not using your best judgment if you set, believe that you're rescuing a puppy from some terrible conditions in a pet store, more likely in some uh, you know, suburban house uh, back in the garden. Um, you're not, you're, all you're doing is feeding the trade by putting money into the trade. Um, you really should go to accredited breeders or, of course, I would say, go to Battersea Dogs Home or the Dogs Trust mm -hmm. or any of the national charities and, indeed, all the little local charities all over the country which are doing fantastic work with rescue, rehome, uh, rejected dogs, which are fabulous. Now, uh, we were talking earlier, earlier on about how, I mean, if, you know, good, decent people trying to get themselves a dog. They go and see what they think is a legitimate breeder. Yeah. Very easy for that person to pull the wool over their eyes. I mean, oh. you were saying, ask to mm. see the mother, but they could just open a door and say, no, there she is, look. Mm -hmm. Isn't that mm. nice? You know, how, how can you really know? Have a high degree of suspicion and keep all your, your you know, suspicious instincts well tuned up because there is a lot of conning going on. Local newspaper ads are extremely beguiling. Yeah. And, and I think editors and certainly training standards um, should be looking closely at all of these advertisements because they have the power to really close down a lot of these operations and to stop this trade which is mostly legal. And yeah. one, of, one of the golden rules I think is if you are thinking about um, getting a puppy from a breeder and they pretend that's the mother, um, I think the golden rule is to actually say actually I'll, I'll go away and think about it and come back. Any decent, for example, a kennel club accredited breeder will just say actually that's a good thing, uh, go away, come back, we'll keep this puppy for you. A puppy farmer, puppy or anywhere in that chain, a dealer or whatever will say actually you need to sell it now. Because what they want to like do, pressure selling. Yeah. For sure, because what happens is as soon as a puppy gets older and we're talking days, even a few weeks, it's its characteristic change and they become not the breed that the person think it is. Roger, the, the trouble is in these situations we end up telling the buyer that it's all down to them. You know, yeah. you've got to be suspicious, you've got to ask the right questions, you've got to suss it out. But surely there is legislation in place that should be enforceable because these puppies under animal welfare legislation should not be kept like this. We have this animal welfare um, bill which um, is now law and it just hasn't been applied in enough um, uh, instances really to know whether or not it's going to work. And but whose it, fault it, it is, is that? that? Well, it, it is down to the, the, the training standards. They have the power, local authorities have the power to enter these premises and to ensure that the five critical freedoms are being applied. Um, but they're, it, it's quite difficult when it gets to a courtroom battle with clever defence lawyers so, so that the behavioural deprivation which, in, which we know these animals living in little cages are receiving, uh, no contact with humans, no contact with toys, no contact with other dogs, that those really are deprivations and they really are cruel conditions. Just a last thought, the logic would be there should be a place where you can go and you know if you've seen an advert somewhere, have a look it up, see if they're legitimate. Does, does that not exist? Um, well, luckily um, recently I've set up a new website called um, www.thepet.net which is a, a resource for pet owners to, to come on and actually rate their experiences with pet services and we're not talking just about breeders but pubs and, and everything that dog friendly and can highlight the, the welfare and, and happiness of a dog's life so check it out the, the pet industry is such a word of mouth industry and uh, I'm, I'm so proud to, to be able to provide a service where people can actually come on it's free people can share their opinions and actually sort of rate and comment on the best for their pet okay a lot of people have got in touch with us about that sort of very obviously very personal experiences, often naming places specifically. Uh, thank you both for your time this morning. Thank Sorry. you very your much. Your dog you. has been absolutely Busy. immaculately behaved. Of course. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> You're off. Thanks, Lovely to see you. Thanks Pleasure. very much indeed.